Generating traffic and sales can be a challenge for online merchants. But selling on the Walmart marketplace puts your products in front of millions of customers who shop on walmart.com. And right now, sellers who join Walmart Marketplace can save up to 50% on referral and fulfillment fees for the first 90 days. So get started today. Head over to marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. That's marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. Welcome to E-Commerce Conversations, a weekly podcast from Practical E-Commerce, hosted by entrepreneur Eric Bantholz. What is going on, internet? Eric Bantholz back again with another E-Commerce Conversations. I hope all is going well on the other side of the internet. On the other side of the table from me, Paul. Hi, Eric. What's up, man? Good to be back. Yeah. yeah been Third excited. time's a charm is what they say. First two are disaster of podcasts. I thought they were great. <laughs> on my drive back up here, I re-listened to the first one and we recorded that three years ago. It's was crazy. It? Yeah. It's amazing. Time flies, first of all, but second of all, it's awesome to have that milestone to go back to, to like listen to my enthusiasm <laughs> before like stuff started getting hard, you know? Yeah. Has it gotten harder for you? I mean, you make it look so easy. So when I say hard, growth is hard. Yeah. Growth is hard. We're doing very well, but managing growth and scale comes with a lot of challenges. You know, we do fulfillment in-house. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, you know, things to solve for along the way as your brand is growing. Yeah. And which is the fun part. Yeah. Well, you've been growing. You've been growing quite a bit. Are you saying how much you guys are growing? No, you kind of do it publicly on Twitter, right? We just celebrated another milestone, you know, that first time we came together and recorded a podcast three years ago, we were celebrating crossing the $1 million, $1 million mark. Yeah. So last week we just crossed into eight figures. So trailing 12 months, we, we've done- You, you 10X'd oh. it in a course of three years. Yeah. So managing that comes with its challenges. It's been learning a lot in terms of, you know, the way that I've looked at that journey over the last three years is there's basically three components to our business that at any given time- one of those is out of flux and needs radical correction to get you to the next level. Those three things are supply, demand, and then delivery, right? And so along the way, you know, we had, you know, out of the gate supply related issues, not being able to forecast correctly, running out of inventory. It's a good problem to have, but it, it's, it's a big problem. So that, and of course, as you know, the freight issues of, I don't even know what year it was, 2021, yeah. whatever it is containers skyrocketed in price it was taking ages to get product in that was a huge challenge for us along the way and then on the demand side the last uh, we've been talking a little bit about this recently but you know paid uh, customer acquisition was a big part of our more recent growth going from five to ten million and figuring that out being able to to bring that up to scale obviously throws the supply equation out of yeah. whack and then delivery, our capacity to deliver, we're doing fulfillment in-house, our capacity to deliver goods and packages to our customers, get them out the door. It's reaching a new level that I never thought it would. And, you know, last month we, we shipped out over 20,000 packages, which blows my mind. Yeah, that's like a thousand a day if you're working five days a week. A lot of that came within short windows. And so we kind of have a daily baseline, but we're still dealing with huge spikes with various events and launches. So it comes with its challenges. Yeah. And so I think what's even more impressive and you get, you should be like the case study for e-commerce for how you've built it by leaning on organic, leaning on personality, having purpose behind the brand, having a small light product that is in a kind of niche that's not entirely saturated. Like you, you, you've checked all the boxes you know, purposeful collaborations. And you've done this without bloating the heck out of your team. Like we were talking before we hit record and you have, I'm going to call them like office workers and fulfillment workers. I know you separate them slightly different, but it's like six and a half full-time people who are quote unquote, like office kind of computer oriented people. And then the rest are fulfillment people that it's like a dozen part-time fulfillment people. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think most companies, to me, it's kind of like one employee for every million dollars of revenue. And you're at six and a half. I would say one office employee. Mm -hmm. uh, so where do you think that efficiency 
comes from? Like, how are you able to accomplish so much with so few personnel resources? I feel at least right now we're, we're kind of hitting a red zone. It, it's going to be very difficult to continue growth without bringing on new people to help go beyond what we're doing in terms of on the, the office side. I shoulder a lot of the responsibilities across various functions of the business myself. And so there's definitely, it's stuff I thrive at. I, I love doing. Yeah. And so every one of our emails that goes out, I'm creating them, you know, managing inbound freight, you know, working with contract, like everything outside of the social aspects and, and content, a lot of stuff falls on my plate. But for me, operating under constraints is a superpower. It's something not only do I thrive in because it gives me a variety of things to do with my day, my week, and my time. It gets me exposure to, and, and when you play the, the field so wide, your ability to move agilely and fast and make decisions immediately, there's no other way to do it. We are getting to a point in terms of our size and scale that that is a huge constraint. And I recognize as we go from 10 to 20, the big piece of our ability to get there is going to require us building out a more full team to help get us there. And so that's very front of mind for me. Between the visionary and integrator, how do you regard yourself? I definitely straddle both sides of the fence. Yeah. hundred percent. Okay. Cause it's, it's funny. My last episode with John, which hasn't gone live yet. He is like a complete visionary, just ideas left and right, mm -hmm. you know, super bubbly, like just let's do this, let's do that. And yep. you, you clearly love the execution. Mm -hmm. Like I've had multiple conversations with you over the years where it's like, no, I want to do it first. I want to do it first and I want to figure it out and then kind of hire it out. Yep. Do you, I, I guess, first question, how many hours do you work in a week? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a question that really applies to me. I'm always thinking and working in terms of hands on the keyboard, you know, give me, let, let's call it 50 hours a week, something like that. Okay. Do you feel like you can be present in your children's and wife's life? Yeah. So I work with my wife. Yeah. A lot of that work time is working out of the house. I definitely do feel present. And going back to kind of my childhood and growing up, my parents own their own business as well. My dad definitely had elements of both the integrator and visionary kind of in himself. And looking back, you know, he's an architect and builder. So he built high end luxury homes. Typically, you have an architect and a builder. Those are two separate right. people. Very rarely do they cross over. My dad had a love for the design, the more visionary aspect of seeing a, a plot of land, and he could visualize and see, you know, through the cube of marble, you know, the, the statue underneath, right? And then also going through execution and the building side of things, uh, taking that vision and, and chipping away at the marble and then revealing the ultimate vision there. I grew up, you know, running around his office. And so I got to see that firsthand. And that was how I grew up. My girls are also seeing my wife and I do, do something similar. Are your girls fulfilling orders yet? Because they're like, what, like eight and 10, something like that? Yeah. So yeah, right around there. And yeah, so they're, they're young. They're not quite fulfilling orders yet, but they... Got to build those calluses up, man. Like I do bring them in and they love assembling boxes. Okay. And so that's kind of their first stepping stone. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the opportunity as they grow to be able to see the business grow and have opportunity to do more. But yeah, we, we rope them in when we can. I would imagine like four years of grinding, like I would probably hit my burnout phase by then. And it doesn't sound like you're close to burnout, but it does sound like you're doing a lot and you've got to get it off. What does that next step of hires look like? You, you mentioned you got to bring on help. What's your strategy for how you're going to bring those people on? Yeah, so two things. One, around burnout. Six months ago, my company looked very different, just given the trajectory we're on. I get to experience things with fresh eyes every single day. It's a lot, but it's all new. I'm learning new things every day. I thrive in that. And so burnout to me is when I'm doing the same thing day in and day out and not, you know, growing from there, growing the business. That's the point at which I would burn out. And it's not to say we're, we're not going to hit that at some point, but that would be the point at which, you know, I, I'd be burnt out. Yeah. For me, six months from today will look very different than it is right now. And in order to get there, the people we need to bring in 
definitely someone to help on the, the e-commerce side, managing websites, customer acquisition, retention, the email flows. There's a lot of low hanging fruit that is, again, when you're operating under constraints, you have to prioritize and have a good sense of what the highest value area to focus on is at any given time. And that's just a game I've been playing for the last four years. What is the highest impact that I can, that's going to move the needle? But I'm aware that there's so much low hanging fruit that I need to bring in people to help fortify and build out those foundations across the board. You're in the grand scheme of like size of businesses, you're still a small business. Yep. In the grand scheme of like e com and our space, Shopify stores, you're huge, huge business. You've done a lot. It's kind of, you know, with these hires, you have, I guess, the option of do you hire someone who's kind of a jack of all trades where they can do email and, you know, Facebook ads? Or are you at the point where you feel like everyone you hire has to be specialized? For me, naturally, I go to jack of all trades purely because that's the world I've lived in, wearing so many different hats at any given time. So naturally, and, and it's a challenge for me because I, I project that on other people and assume that people can handle that or have interest in doing a lot of different things. I'm still figuring that out. I don't have the answer to that. I can tell you I've on the fulfillment side, the operation side of our business, you kind of touched on that. That's the area in terms of headcount that it's growing faster. So we have one full-time operations fulfillment manager, and then about a dozen part-time team members that help support pick pack and the day-to-day -day fulfillment. That is where I'm learning to manage people in teams. I'm not very good at it, but I feel as though operationally, it gives me a way to really define process because it's, it's a simple equation. Orders come in and they got to go out and we got to figure out how to do that as we continue to scale. And so it gives us a framework to operate within that's very clear opposed to on the product side. If I were to bring in someone for product development and to help us understand our product roadmap and product sourcing, that's a little more open-ended. It's not clear to me how you manage that process. That's going to be a challenge for me. I think also on the e-commerce, the marketing, the design, the web, everything that goes on that side of the fence outside of social and content creation, which we do have a team for and they're phenomenal. The other stuff is stuff that I'm facilitating right now and my standards are super high. Yeah. And that is going to be a huge challenge. So going forward, I need to figure out how to bring in the right people, whether they're jacks of all trades or specialized. And then also I need to, thinking through it, honestly, as we're talking about it right now, bringing in someone that's specialized, that brings a high degree of capabilities and can meet my expectations, I think would require someone who is specialized in that specific seat. And so as I start to peel stuff off, talking through it right now, it probably would be best to bring in specialists. Yeah. So my unsolicited advice before you said that was going to be hire a specialist and focus on the hire where they have the most, like the highest need for that. So if email takes, you know, 40 hours a week and creating these flows and blog articles and however, like the hire the copyright first, but if most of the time is going to be spent like creating ads or managing Facebook or whatever it is, or web design and making tweaks to the website, whatever it is, like where you have the most time, like start there and just do that one thing because I'm like you, I'm a jack of all trades kind of guy and I get bored just doing one thing, but like finding the person who's good at web design and copywriting and ads, like they don't exist. And, or they would be, they, they're you and me, Yeah, we do exist, but we're not working for anybody. So yeah, I would say like at your size business, especially doing, you know, eight figures, like it's certainly the time to be specialized and go from there. I do want to segue into one of the big things that you've been doing to grow, which is TikTok, TikTok shops specifically. And you're the only person in the world who's talking about it. I'm not hearing much about it. I think it is super early days. It is the pioneering time of something new that's coming out. We've been on TikTok shops for about a month and a half now. Prior to when we first got on, it was before Shopify had rolled out their native integration, which they just did uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe two or three at most. But it is still definitely early days. We found some initial success. And that's another thing, operating under constraints. For me, what was 
the next thing for us was getting onboarded into Amazon. I was midway through the process. I was actually working with their, I forget what they call it, but they have teams that help emerging brands that are established get on. So we had support internally from Amazon and we're holding regular meetings with them. And it was actually a couple of days ago when I emailed them and said, you know, we're going to push this to next year. You know, thank you for your help. Yeah. Good for I need to radically focus on an area of the business that more aligns with the DNA that we have to offer, right? So our origins, we started working with content creators on social platforms. And what I'm seeing across TikTok shops is it's just for us as a brand, where we've come from and what our superpowers are, TikTok shops really plays into that well, and we're seeing a lot of success. And so, yeah, right now on any given day, it makes up about 15% of our total business today. And so, it, and that's growing. There's a lot of benefits right now. TikTok is spending a lot of money subsidizing, basically extending discounts to buyers on the platform up 20 to 40%. And that is helping with conversions, getting people adopted in terms of- You don't have to pay for that. Oh, it goes in my pocket. That's crazy. And they're offering free shipping, which goes in my pocket. Yeah. So there's a lot of benefit getting in right now with TikTok shops. They are in the process. And I tell like, as we get closer to holiday, you're going to see them go crazy. Because this is, this is when they're trying to make their mark, and they have three sides of the stool to try and get convinced that TikTok shop is where they need to invest their time and resources. One is on the brand side, the merchants, right, what we're talking about. The other, obviously, is the buyers. You have to convince them that, hey, I can actually buy legitimate products from brands directly on TikTok shops, and the experience is going to be you know, what I expect and an ideal experience. And the third is content creators that are already operating on TikTok now have the ability to continue to talk about the products that they love and they're sharing with their audience and now gives them an opportunity to make commission and earn income from doing that because the transactions happen right there. And we're managing now an affiliate program within TikTok and some of the creators. What what kind of range of commissions are you doing for that? So as you know, we've been running an affiliate program off of TikTok just years standard thing we're working with share a sale and so that's how we've compensated people on platforms like youtube and and beyond to make a living talking about our products on tiktok it never was easy to have an affiliate link there's no description box below Mm -hmm. you can't really not everyone goes into the comments exactly and so up until tiktok shops rolled out it was pretty much air gapped like we would see a video pop off on tiktok that was talking about us and our YouTube organic traffic would surge because people had to like Google us and be like, who's this brand they're talking about? Okay, great. And we get some conversions. Now it all takes place in platform while people are watching and they can check out right there. And so you, you mentioned how much, so basically it mirrors our existing affiliate program. And so what we offer is 15% commissions. Yeah. One of the strategies that we've been rolling out the last couple of weeks is our best sellers. We have three specific products that we're really trying to incentivize creators to run with because for various reasons, we have a much stronger inventory position. Those are things that we just carry inventory. We never want to run out of because they go pretty quickly. And so for those, we're juicing that up to about 25% commission at a SKU level on mm-hmm. TikTok. And we're seeing that really motivate people to get dialed in and continue to talk about those products. And again, TikTok is subsidizing a lot of of this right now. And so we see that as, you know, gravy that we're able to kind of move around and kind of increase and get aggressive ourselves. So a couple of things I, I want to dig into, you know, kind of like a live version of TikTok. I wish you had told Amazon that you were going to Walmart marketplaces. <laughs> that would have been like the chef's kiss for me, you know, like, uh, sorry, we want to Sorry, Walmart. Um, but uh, maybe in the future, One that, day. Will, that will be your conversation. So you, before we hit record, you're telling me, go to the BK Beauty. Is that what you want me to type into search? Yeah. So I'm on TikTok right now. I got the app pulled up. Yep. And then I guess it takes me straight to the shop. It, it doesn't take me to... Yeah. Your TikTok page or anything like, do you have a TikTok page? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so it's crazy. It goes to the shop first. So TikTok is really getting in front of people as much as possible. And so the fact you just searched for our brand and we're presented our shop out of the gate, I haven't seen that myself, but yeah, TikTok not only is the algorithm, you can tell videos that tag products in TikTok shops are definitely seeing a high lift in terms of their view count. 
I mean, it's natural. TikTok wants to amplify that content. The real magic, and so when so we- hold on. I, I, I want to go through this and ask a couple of questions. All these photographs are knockout. Is that a requirement, or is it just pulling the images from your website? Yeah. So there's two components of getting integrated into TikTok shops outside of just onboarding and setting up your account. You need some sort of way to integrate your catalog of mm-hmm. products, and so TikTok needs to sync that up. Uh, right now, we're on Shopify's native integration. Uh, before that, we were using something called Silk Commerce, which was, you know, something that somebody built out prior to Shopify having a solution. And so, being able to sync your catalog—that's what you're seeing. And so, okay. it's just a mirror of of our existing Shopify line of products. But they wouldn't mind, like, because ours is, is on a like a light blue. That would be fine if it. Yes, it would okay. be. Mm-hmm. Like Amazon, I think they've. These got, are like, just our stock okay. product photography. So I go here, and then I click on a product, and. It's just like a very simple PDP. Yes. Designed by them. You don't have, uh, how are the reviews being fed in here? These are all TikTok reviews purchased on TikTok. Yes. So like it's saying, you know, like you have, like if I go back to here, it says you did 1.1K sold. So those are actually sold on TikTok. I haven't even seen this, but yeah. So they, yes, that that is all on TikTok. Okay. That's crazy. And that's, you're just looking at one, one product, right? Okay. So then you come in. These images are just pulled from Shopify. Do you Mm -hmm. identify which ones you want to go live? Do you have to keep them square? You have to sync them. No. no. Um, Ours are not even completely square. So no, you don't. But let me throw something out. So you're looking at our actual shop right now, which is important. It's a showcase of the products on the brand's page. The magic really happens off of what you're looking at right there. The magic happens when creators, at least for us, what we've seen when creators, um, prior to TikTok shops being available, we had a, you know dozens and dozens and dozens of big creators talking about our products and using our products on TikTok. Again, there was no kind of clear path to check out. You know, there was some conversions. I looked at it at top of the funnel awareness, TikTok. Now TikTok has really started to come down and capturing the entire funnel down to the actual transaction itself. And so it's, we have... Um, I'll give you an example. One of the biggest videos that we've seen so far, it had, at least at this point, about 1.7 million views. So it was a sizable video. It was a content creator that put it out maybe two weeks ago, last week, something like that. It's generated you know, low five figures in terms of sales. It's put a good deal of commissions into her pocket. But that's where the sales are coming from. It's coming from the ecosystem of content creators that are talking about products they love. And now they're enabled to monetize that more effectively and share that with the customers that are engaging with their content online without having to leave the platform. Yeah. You know, what's crazy is like, we've kind of leaned on affiliate. That's been one of our growth strategies this past year. And we found that essentially influencers don't convert at all. We had better luck with like blog articles. And I think it's simply a product of, you know, like they don't see the affiliate link to click on anything like that. So this really does like change the strategy for how you acquire customers because you can just do it all natively through TikTok. And do you find that this is pretty similar to Facebook shop? I don't. So we are also on Facebook shop, meta shop, mm-hmm. whatever it's yeah. being called these days. Instagram. And it's one of those things that I, I set up. We even have ads running people to check out natively there, but it's not something that gets a lot of my attention. It was just, okay, we set it up. We have it great. Whereas TikTok is the, the direction they're building as a, a, what they're trying to build is everything under the hood. I mentioned they have their own native affiliate program that allows you to manage it. Everything f- from checkout to, a, you know, like building demand and awareness, everything is self-contained within that platform. What TikTok is, and even they're, they're getting into the fulfillment game. Mm. Yeah. TikTok fulfillment is is a thing. So they are trying to own every piece of the e-commerce stack within their ecosystem. And what's interesting is by doing that, they're able to offer something that is unique, that is different from what Meta is bringing to the table. Meta and Facebook have built out the most efficient customer acquisition solution the universe has ever known, Right. They are building an advertising platform and that's what they optimize for, right? How can we acquire customers for people more efficiently so they spend more ad dollars? 
I see TikTok, they have that too, but what they're layering in right now, enabling content creators to earn a commission on the platform, further incentivizing them to produce more content. Yeah, they, so like creators on Instagram and Facebook, they don't get commission? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Not at the same level that I'm seeing on on Meta, at least not in a way that is facilitated by the platform that has mechanics and data that TikTok is actually sharing an incredible amount of data, not only with the brand in terms of transactional data, you know, what videos are performing, but also they're sending this back to the creators as well. And we know that because my wife is a creator and getting spun up, we ran tons of tests to better understand the experience from both sides of the fence. And it's incredible the amount of data that TikTok is sharing. I think they're setting it up in a very um, thoughtful way that gamifies things and incentivizes people to now not only optimize their content and video based on like highest views, yeah. which was the case, but now they're seeing sales data, conversion data, click-through data on the actual shop stuff they're tagging, you know, the monetization, how much they're earning on a, you know, relative to total views. So does TikTok have like a platform where it allows creators to find products yes. and then you can subsidize the products to the creators as well, or? I'm really only scratching the surface of what TikTok has to offer. And yeah. so TikTok has a native sampling So if you have in, like, you know, 20,000 followers or, or more, mm -hmm. or, you know, have produced like a thousand videos. It or automates it. Okay. And so if you're a creator and you're also enrolled in the TikTok shops, which not everyone is first eligible to, yeah. but people who are meaningfully making content and this is the, they're all eligible. But it does take steps to be aware that this is an option and to enroll and get set up. Yeah. But yeah, from there, you can find and connect with brands that have a sampling program within TikTok. And so for us, we have those three hero SKUs that I talked about. Anyone who meets our criteria, which TikTok has given us the controls to set thresholds. Yeah. What are those criteria for y'all? I'd have to look back, you know, out of the gate. We're, we're still in test mode. Yeah. What we have set right now may change tomorrow. We set those thresholds very high just because so high like 100k high followers like do you do it on followers or do you do it's it on both it's average views as well okay. as followers if i'm remembering co correctly there's probably some more options in there but those are the two big ones and so for us it, it very likely is you know 100,000 plus followers mm -hmm. and then a certain amount of you know average video views as well yeah. okay and then so the beauty is that can be automated so people reach out and they request product samples it's automated all the way to delivery because TikTok is now able to generate the order. Yeah, so it creates an order for you. It, it just comes in. 100%. It creates the order. It syncs with Shopify. For us, we're leveraging ShipStation to do yeah. our fulfillment in-house. Hat tip to Hat ship tip station. ShipStation. And so, yeah, everything is synced. And so those orders come in, we process them. And even TikTok, whenever we do product, we do a lot of product seeding ourselves in-house. And so not, not a formal process like yeah. I'm describing here that's built into the platform. But we do a lot of outreach, get our products in, in, into creators' hands. We don't have any sort of requirements whatsoever. Yeah. You know, we identify people who, you know, might love our products. We send them out with no expectation of posting content. Just please enjoy. TikTok does have built-in requirements, part of the sampling process. Yeah. And not only that, but they are now able to track the order through the tracking number for shipping. They know when the order has arrived and then basically said yeah create some content on this make yeah. some commissions yeah man that's brilliant like everything is built in i you know and you said it's doing like 15 percent of your sales right now are coming through tiktok yeah we've been on for i mentioned maybe a month and a half um we we have done yeah so nearly nearly six figures a month it's getting there yeah, yeah. so we've been on for a month and a half the last couple of weeks have, have been ratcheted up quite a bit relative to where we we were and so yeah we, we've done over six figures in sales yeah. uh, so far. I will say I'm cheerleading a lot right now. Yeah. There's a lot of pain points that come around with, you know, panning for gold and running for the hills when you yeah. see, you well, know, not only that, like TikTok will always like butter you up in the early months. Uh, and then like all the subsidies they're throwing around right now, it is very intense. Once you, once you get on and get plugged in, which it can be buggy. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of pain operationally. Once you start to hit some sort of scale with orders and, you know, say just this last weekend, we had 
200 orders that for some reason didn't sync over to Shopify. So they were sitting around mm. and didn't have visibility into them. How did you find that? TikTok notified us and said, hey, by the way, you should have shipped this already. You know, you're about yeah. to get, you know, dinged for that. And we're like, oh, shit. You know, yeah. okay. Does that come in through TikTok as like a TikTok message? Yes. Okay. An so email. it's not like an updates. An email as well. Mm -hmm. Are you the one running your TikTok page? So we definitely have, I mentioned, you know, small team, but we're all, so actually right now in about an hour, our team in house is going to be hosting a TikTok live. And I saw that. Where I they do, that. oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. It's at oh, two okay. o'clock. Yeah. yeah. There it is. So two hours. And so we're definitely throwing our entire team's focus on this. Yeah. And this is one of these, the reasons why, you know, Amazon just didn't, you know, meet the threshold in terms of a priority right now. And so we're, you know, all rallying around trying to figure out this new platform and this new opportunity to see if it's a good fit. And so far we've seen some success and, and the biggest thing we're focused on right now is trying to educate the creators who are already talking about us on TikTok. Yeah. Trying to get them onto TikTok shops because again, from an awareness, awareness standpoint, there are so many merchants just not aware and haven't dipped their toe in the water yeah. yet, but creators also, there's not that many really participating in this yet. Right. And so we created, our team created a guide. Uh, we're doing outreach. We're trying to get these people onboarded um, who are already talking about us. And that's where we're seeing the biggest success. Can you email me that guide? Yeah. And then if someone wants to reach out to you and get that guide, what can they? Yeah, absolutely. Where do they reach out to you? Yeah, Twitter. Twitter's the best spot. Maybe we can include in the show, no show notes, but I, I'm always lurking around Eric's. Yeah, I make them. I got to make them work for it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's my name, at Paul Howdegy, J-A-U-R-E-G-Y is last name. Um, but yeah, you'll find me on Twitter. I'm pretty vocal in the DDC community, so I would imagine a number of folks who are regular listeners of this show yeah. uh, may already be connected. Please do reach out. As you know, I'm very plugged into the ECF, find a lot of value, e-commerce fuel. I've already shared the guide there. And so if you're an ECF, I can point you to it. But yeah, hit me up. I'm happy to share. Honestly, the more people who get on TikTok from the brand side, from the creator side, and from the consumer side, the more that lifts everyone yeah. up. It's like if you missed the gold rush for Amazon and uh, being a seller in there, like this has that potential to be that new platform. It's possible. It's possible. But it was the same thing with Amazon too. You didn't know, but I don't know. It doesn't seem like TikTok's slowing down as, as much as I dislike the platform. So yeah, yeah. It's blown me away. I will say that there's always been, everyone has had a love-hate relationship with TikTok. The way I view it is if, if our customers and buyers are on the platform, I want to I wanna be there. Yeah. And the way TikTok is structuring their solution to social commerce looks very appealing for a business like mine that comes with the DNA and the background of a creator-led brand who thrives on getting our products in the hands of people doing makeup tutorials and product reviews online. Yeah. Where can they support you? Where, where can they buy some brushes? Yep. BKBeauty.com is where you'll find our store. Reach out on Twitter. That's the best place. Yeah. Twitter. To so you personally. Yeah, absolutely. Not to, is BK Beauty on Twitter? No. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think for this audience, again, I get so much value out of connecting with other folks who are on this journey. I know that regular listeners of this show, I mean, those are the type of people I want to connect with. And, and just going back to you, your show has provided me so much value. I'm a regular listener myself. I've even gone back into the archives and listened to every old episode as well. I truly believe that there's no speed limit to learning as long as you know where to get plugged in with content that, that helps educate you. For me, it's, it's been podcasts like this one. This is one of the top of my list as well as community and, and peers as yeah. well. And so the more people I connect with personally and learn from, uh, the better. Yeah, I agree. I agree. This has been another e-commerce conversations. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, I'm going to go straight to get my shop set up on TikTok probably before this even gets uploaded. So hit us, hit me up on Twitter too. And if you want to talk about it, as always, thanks for listening. Cheers. Keep on growing.